my name is Chasty, and welcome back to She Likes It Hard. I'm here with Alyssa, my co-host, um, who is always anxious at the beginning of these episodes. I am always anxious. Uh, that is true. <laughs> that is but, true. So we live on. Yes. And Wait, here we are. I think that was a better intro than the last one that you did for me. Uh, a personal oh. intro. It was, it was better. <laughs> We're getting there. I'm going to let Chastity start introducing me, guys. Oh, we- oh my gosh. Um, all right. So let's get into our hard ask of the day. It says, hi, ladies. Hello. Hola. Um, this guy I have been talking to consistently takes forever to respond to me, meaning hours at least four between each text. When that happens, I tend to wait a day. <laughs> I tend to wait a day to respond because I'm annoyed and think, this is in quotation marks, no, he's not going to play me, unquotation mark. But my sister says I'm being petty. What do y'all think? I think you're being petty. Do I want, should I be nicer or should I be mean? Be real. <laughs> if it's mean, if it's nice, um, whatever real is. So A, it's probably already playing you. Mm, okay, I didn't even think about that. Okay. Um, B, if you if you're just trying to have fun and be petty, be petty. I'm a petty Betty, but I know that I'm a petty Betty. Right, know? that's the key. Oh. That's the key. A lot of people don't know when they are petty, or they refuse that they are petty when they. Yeah, but if you're like you're doing this to get like a little row out of him, mm, it's not working. Yeah, give up. <laughs> like. <laughs> There you go. It's not working because like never. I'm a I'm one of those people who won't who text in hours and days and whatever. So never am I like oh she took an hour to text and I could care less. Yeah. I'll just forget about it and then like, like and it's crazy because I don't open my messages because I know people who open them and then forget to respond. Me? I don't even open them. I leave the like notification thing on it's just i just may not respond to you for like 10 hours because i may not have the time to sit there and respond but like you know yeah. some people don't understand that so. so but yes i do think you're being petty yeah so if you're gonna be petty be petty but like i don't know if this is a very efficient way to be petty because i don't even think he probably notices or cares i was gonna say i don't think he cares so no i would just move on Find somebody else. Especially Find if you somebody care else that to much. do it. <laughs> yeah, but like if you care that much about somebody responding, you clearly like want somebody. You don't want somebody that's la- lackadaisical. You want somebody to be with. So like you, this clearly, it's a nick or a red flag. Oh, fuck. On to the next one. Yellow flag. On to the next <laughs> Yellow flag. <laughs> Yellow flag. Um, yeah, I say move on. Like stop being petty. There's no point. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your question. It was boring anyway. Tired next. Yeah. Go. Right. You can't go. even have a conversation, go. like a full conversation, like <laughs> if you only hitting each other up like once a day. Yeah. Like yeah. what kind of conversation is that? That's not a conversation. Y'all, so, was, y'all both wasting each other time. Yeah. Like y'all can't begin to know each other. So no, not for it. That's all I have to say. Not mm. for it. Chessie, what's been going on with you? Mm. Wait, can we talk about our baking hobby? Oh, wait, yeah. I thought you were talking about that later. No, I was supposed to do the last episode and I totally forgot. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, I have developed a stress reliever and it is baking. And I absolutely love baking. And like Chastity is always baking. So I sent her my cake <laughs> and I was like, Chastity, I'm turning into you. Like, oh, weak. I felt so proud. A little belly, Betty Crocker. I know. I made a pound cake. I've been making cookies like crazy. And I'm talking like. 150 cookies like and it's it's good that i don't eat all the stuff like it's usually i usually only make it when i have i only make the cookies when i have somebody to give them to yeah. because otherwise those would sit at my house the cake i was supposed to give away but they never hit me up to drop it off so i was like crap oh, so i ate some my mom ate some like the pound cake was good y'all you should have brought it to church it's gone now my sisters came know, home and both yeah. smashed it <laughs> i was so proud of myself too y'all that cake was good and like i'm not a baker so, like, for somebody to just, like, go into baking and actually do baking well, I, was, oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, we. So, now I'm about to be, like, chastity and baking for my man and his friends. Well, once I get one. Period. Because <laughs> ain't that what your, his friends always asking yes, you to don't do? Don't set that expectation. <laughs> That's oh, bad. Maybe I don't want to do I'll that. I'll be walking through the So, you going to make some brownies? <laughs> no. Can I breathe? <laughs> Let's say hi first. How about I was that? about to say something else, but. What? PG-13. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah. So, but yes, new baking hobby. 
it's a good stress reliever. I do recommend it if you are like. I'm telling you, you be up yeah. there whipping it. Mm-hmm. And I think it's more like <laughs> people would say like cooking in general, but I feel like baking is just so precise that you don't really have time to be focusing on like, yeah. oh, let me put as much pepper in here as I want to, like, and not even think about it. Like, you really have to be thinking while you're baking. So I think it's a really good stress reliever. Yeah, I like baking. Take it up, y'all, if y'all need it. Especially because you get to give it to people. Yeah. And like, oh, it's so good. Then mm-hmm. you feel good about yourself because it's good. Because you work hard on that day, okay? Mm-hmm. Take it up. But I'm scared because they say you're either like a good baker or a good cook. And I'm like, if I'm this good at baking, I'm going to scare my husband. (laughs) I'm going to scare my husband or my boyfriend. Me and Malik are your critiques. And we just don't think you're a good cook. I know. I know y'all And that's okay. Everybody can't get everything. It's fine. (laughs) It's fine. But also, you tell me you proactively don't cook. So, like. I don't. But but also, you don't think that I'm a bad um, baker. Well, I mean, you're just I, I've only had your brownies. I don't think I've ever had anything uh-huh. else. Uh-huh. You had a cake before. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I've had... Oh, yeah. Cupcakes and stuff. I used to bake all the time. Oh. Okay. I, yeah. Dang, I baked a minute. But yeah. And you, I'm... I, what the heck? I am... And you never complained. And then you've had my food before, too. So maybe that's the thing about you can't be one um, or the other. Okay. I don't know. But no, nah, you scared me that one day when you told me you ain't no Cajun was spicy. I said, this girl not in the kitchen. <laughs> I knew it was spicy, but I didn't know it was that hot. Like, I, I've i never had Cajun, anything <laughs> Cajun. And my favorite wings are Cajun chicken wings. And I have never been like, I can't eat this. But when I had that pasta and I was like, <laughs> I can't eat this. I was like, what the heck? This is not supposed to be this spicy. Like, it just threw me for a loop. But I also did get a Cajun pasta in the South versus getting... Cajun dry rub chicken wings and dipping it in honey mustard. Like, so it is a little different, but yeah, I was just, I was just a little lost. I knew Cajun is supposed to be spicy, but like, I was like, like this girl don't be in the kitchen. I don't know what the hell we got going on. She's like, I cannot eat this. <laughs> I'm like, why you can't eat it? She's like, I just wanted to spice and have this spice. It's Cajun. <laughs> <laughs> like, the and I don't like spicy. So no. it was just, I, it's a sensitive palate. Usually when oh, I wait. eat, have Cajun stuff, yeah. because it's always a dry rub, I just taste so much salt. Like, it just tastes really salty. I don't really taste spiciness. But, like, there's not, I mean, in a pasta, it's wet. So it's like, oh, you don't taste the spice. Yes. The, wannabe, the wannabe Louisiana Creole in me jumped out and said, <laughs> girl, <laughs> it's Cajun. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. um, that was funny. I'm glad you take up baking, though. Mm -hmm. I love baking. Now I have to take up cooking. Y'all, I'm doing this challenge with my uh, friend, and we are only allowed to eat what we cook for two months, so maybe I'll be able to cook. I guess I'm doing the challenge, too. Oh, yeah. I didn't I'm getting, like, a lot of people to, like, unintentionally do it. Oh, no. Uh, This was already a thing, because you know I have a problem with eating only fast food. Yes, me too. Um, Or Uber Eats. And so, in order for me not to do that, Mm -hmm. I have to cook. Yep. Because how am I going to not Uber Eats? Or eat fast food. So I'm going to do all this cooking. And then you come. By the way, guys, next time. Well, next set we record. Oh, we'll Chas is coming place. in Cleveland. Um, so when you come, I'm going to make you something. And then you can report back to your little boyfriend and be like, she actually made something good. Alyssa, I'm hard to impress. I mean, sure. But like, it's not like I'm supposed <laughs> to be like Chef Ramsay up in here. Oh, like, my God. I never forget. I don't know if we have a nickname for him. I can't remember it if we do. But I remember, I'll never forget <laughs> when I first moved to Atlanta and we were. Was this somebody we both know? Yes. Okay. And we were um, chatting, dating or whatever. He was like, oh, let me make you like some salmon. And that was the worst salmon I ever had in my life. Oh. <laughs> and he was just so impressed. He was like, this is so good. Da, 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 da. And I was like. It's like maybe I don't like salmon. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe I, I maybe I don't like salmon. Oh my gosh. I was over here. I had to send a picture to uh, um, and I was like, I was like, this is the nastiest shit I ever had. In my life. Whatever I make, I'm gonna just stare at your face. Like even if you are like, trying to fake a smile, I'm gonna I, I'll know that way. It's like I'll be fine if you say like this. Yeah, this isn't bad. Like it's just as long as you don't say it's bad. Like no, okay. no yeah. Okay. Like, if you say yeah, this isn't bad. I'm okay. not expecting you to be like, oh my god, it's so good. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I can do that. Okay. But yeah, I never forget that day. 
and then one day he came over and I made some rice to go with like some chicken and he was mm-hmm. like so impressed by my rice and I was like it's rice calm down <laughs> like no effort was put in it's rice um <laughs> but yeah never forget that I will say the one thing I can't make and probably will never try and be like ooh I can make this is a steak oh yeah I have every time that's for men every time I make it it's just chewy making meat is for men I don't I don't (laughs) I'm just kidding but no I've never even tried to make a steak yeah not my thing I yeah for me I don't even think any other meat I can do but a steak mm -mm. I can't can't, it's too that that requires too much precision to me like I don't know and everybody likes their steaks very differently like there's only I don't think anyone likes dry chicken. Like, there's only really one way to make chicken. You got to make it to where it's not pink anymore, to where it's not going to give you food poisoning, but it's not dry. Like, steak is like, oh, I like mine rare, medium, medium well. Like, it's just, I ain't, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. Steak is not my thing. Mm-mm. One thing I will never be like, oh, there's a guy coming over. Let me impress him and make him steak. Nope. If it got I steak didn't even in the know dish, people nope. did that. This may be like sexist, monogamous, monogamous of me. But that's for men. Uh, sure. I'm sorry. I don't Cancel know. me if you didn't can. I don't but know. Like, I don't even. I don't even recall a time that the woman in my family just made a steak. They were like, usually, go, put, go, go put the steak on the grill. I was gonna say because usually anytime you make a steak at home, it's always on the grill. So it's like, yeah, women aren't grilling. And then like, yeah. But sometimes I just make it in a skillet because I need some something to switch up my meats. Yeah, I'm not saying that women can't do that, but yeah, like, it's not a. I just it's one yeah. of those things. Like I'm also not taking out my trash. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, uh, can't you, you take should. that? Any man who walked in the door, can't you take this trash? This yeah, trash can? If, if a man's around, I'm not doing it. I'm not taking my trash. My out. little brother go, can't you take this trash to the trash can? <laughs> <laughs> Could you please go put this steak on the grill? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's move on to the topic. Right. But could you put this steak on the grill? No. So today Uh, we're talking about money, honey. Money, 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 money. 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 Um, So we're going to talk about mm, strategies for negotiating salaries Mm -hmm. and tips. You know, I did not know that people have a lot of issues with this. Absolutely. Such hard times. Like, yeah. I, I don't know why I thought this was just like a given, but I, I honestly didn't even, because I run into people that are around my age. It's like, I didn't even know I could. Yeah. I'm just like, oh yeah, that's what you're supposed <laughs> to do. Like, and I know people that work in HR and they're like, no, we expect that. Like things, and it just, it kind of blew my mind that people don't know that. So <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. I just had to throw that in there. I am weak. But yeah, we're talking about, um, negotiating so what i wrote this is how i'm structuring today's top okay as i fall out my dress um so we are going to talk about researching we're going to talk about preparing we're going to talk about the negotiation and we're going to talk about common pitfalls okay or mishaps whatever you want to say so so the first things first when you negotiate you want to know what should you be doing, Alyssa? What should you know before you start negotiating? You should negotiating one on one from the negotiating expert herself. <laughs> um. So first and foremost, you should know when to. Is that the first thing you mm-hmm. should know? I think one of the first things you should know is when to bring it up no. to a company. You say no. I feel like it is. That's not the first thing you should know. Well, I mean, yes, you should research the position for sure. That's one of the first things you should know. Yeah, you got to act like people don't know nothing. Okay, I'm sorry. See, I told you you'd be doing that. (sighs) Okay. All right. So first first things first, First research the position that you are going after. And not just the position that you're going after at that company, but that same position at competitive companies as well. And what are you looking for while you're researching that position? Um, so you, you mean like, yeah, well, like, like you tell me to research the position. What am I looking for? I'm confused. Why is this important for me to negotiate? Oh, because if I don't know, I don't know how to do these kind of like self talk. Um, I'm, 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 I'm acting I like a person that's never negotiated. Idiot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, because you don't, you need to, okay. You're researching that 
position specific, po- yeah, position specifically because you don't want to. I'm gonna throw a random position out there: a chemical engineer. You don't want to be out here interviewing for a chemical engineer and having the mindset salary of a mechanical engineer. Those are two very, even though they're both engineers in the same field, those require very different things. I don't know for sure. So nobody come for me, but I'm pretty (laughs) sure chemical engineers make a lot more, not a lot more, but would probably make, make more than mechanical engineers because of usually science positions do. But, um, you're, you may be worth an extra $50,000 more as a chemical engineer than you would as a mechanical engineer. So if you over here just looking at engineers in general, or you find what a mechanical engineer makes, you go into this negotiation strategy uh, or this negotiation talk of, okay, I think I should be making $150,000 when you just sold yourself so short and you should be making $200,000. Like you literally just lost out on $50,000. Not only that, not only does that affect your salary, it also affects bonuses. So usually when companies give you bonus, they give you a percentage. Well, if you, they're giving you 10% off a of 150, 150,000 versus 200,000, like that's a huge difference. So you definitely want to make sure that you are researching the position that you have um, so that you know your worth going into it. Um, and I thought I also say research competitors because not only do you, you want, you want to be like, Hey, I know that y'all usually pay y'all companies this or your employees that do the same role, this amount of money. However, the, your competitor is paying an extra 10,000 for this position. And the market is saying that this position is actually worth an additional 10,000. So I feel like that is what I should be making. Now they don't have to pay you that, but (laughs) if you bring that up more than likely, they're going to try and at least meet you somewhere in the middle. They'll be like, okay, you got a point. You got a point. Um, And like I said, first and foremost, I know people that work in HR and they literally tell me that the number that you first get is usually low on purpose. Like they are expecting you to negotiate. They're not expecting you to just stay at that number because sorry, not sorry. Companies looking out for themselves. Like they're not going to pay you this extra money if they don't have to. Like if you find we're just taking this lower salary, like sure. (laughs) And I got this, I got Joey over here that is doing the same work and he wants an extra 50, 15,000, but we budgeted for both of y'all to be making this additional seven and a half. Well, ooh, you just balance it out for us. Like, that's everything. So it's literally like you def- they expect that. So don't be like scared to go into um, negotiation. So yes, research. Research. Step one. Step one. Research. Period. Lucy, how passionate and illicit is. About I this? am. I have. So you the can reason tell she be doing it. <laughs> the reason Chazzy said that is because every <laughs> ne- job I've had, I've always negotiated my salaries like fresh out of college. So. <laughs> Period. Yes, that's why Chazzy says that. <laughs> but. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, you should read. You should read. You. Flip it in reverse. I was searching that too. Um. So, yes, you should research so you can know what the market rate is because you cannot negotiate if you don't even know what you should be looking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's other factors that go into that, too, because obviously you should know, like, what you want, what Mm -hmm. your asking price is, whatever. But sometimes because of, like, the level and the mindset and the things that you've had, you don't even understand or realize (laughs) Mm -hmm. that what you want is not what you can get. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 100% <laughs> 100% like I could want 45k but they could definitely be give, they could be giving me 75 yeah <laughs> but that and that also means like well going the opposite way like you want 75 and they're only giving 45 yes you're looking at the wrong positions anyway that that should tell you like you one if you even think you should be making that amount of money you need to be thinking higher of yourself and be like aiming higher so yeah yeah so like in, in researching your market and knowing like what you mm-hmm. want and what you're doing, you find out a lot about like the position, what it is, what you mm-hmm. feel like you're qualified with, for, what you're not. Da, 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 da. And so I feel like this should just be your first step. And I think one of the um, things about research that a lot of people mess up on is they wait until they're already in the interview process to do the research. And it's like, literally they're waiting for their offer letter. No, you need to do this before you even start the interview <laughs> process. Like, way before. 
And one of the reasons I say that is because some companies, they'll ask you, the HR person will ask you on your first, like, phone screen. Other, like, they'll wait till the hiring manager to bring it up. Like, you may be five interviews down the road when they bring up negotiations, or you may be at the first one. So do this before you even start interviewing. But yes, if you do slip up, there is a way to bounce out of it, though. Just yes. <laughs> um, so next, our next step, I wrote that mm-hmm. you should prepare, um, in which researching is part of preparing, because mm-hmm. if you don't know, how would you know? Yeah. Um, so I said you should prepare because like negotiating is kind of hard, not hard, but it's hard. It's yeah. like, I don't know. You don't want to be caught off guard yeah. when it's time to it's do kinda it. It's kind of like... Yeah, because mm. you don't want to just throw a number out there because one that you just sound stupid, but also <laughs> it sounds like you did not properly prepare for this interview, which is not a good look. Yeah. And not even talking money, it's just talking <laughs> are is, are you should oh I could stutter should you be at our company because you weren't you probably didn't look into this company like it kind of tells you a lot. So definitely yeah prepare. Yeah. It's like. And then, like, you don't want to, like Alyssa saying, you don't want to be, like, caught off guard. You don't mm-hmm. want to be, like, because basically you're getting to the money. And when people get to the money, they get real serious. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. The smiles and the fake ha-ha-has mm-hmm. go out the window. Yeah. So you want to be ready. You want to be right there. You want to be on your A game. So you need to be pra- practicing your pitch. You want to talk. You want to know what you're, what you're willing to accept, what you're willing not to accept. Mm-hmm. Like, these are things you should just know r- off bat. So yeah. if you want to come in and you're like, at, at max, my max is 80K, but the minimum I'm willing to take is like uh, 72. Mm-hmm. You need to know that. Yeah. Because if somebody is negotiating with you and they're like, oh, yeah, we can offer you like, uh, like 70. Is that fine mm-hmm. by you? But you never thought about it. And you never see what you needed to do. Never been, never flex to be like, oh, like the lowest I can really take is 72. How would you know? It sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds good when you're coming from 45. Right. Right. <laughs> it sounds good when you're coming from $13 an hour to 20. Mm-hmm. Like, it just sounds good. So, yeah. And part of the preparing aspect, too, you need to prepare yourself for them not to agree with you. Oh, like, yes. You, Go ahead. They Alyssa. might <laughs> counter you, and we'll get into the negotiation piece of it, but, like, they might counter you, or a lot of times, like, one of the roles that I interviewed for they didn't ask me first. They told me. And it was like, okay, shoot, that is not at all what I want. <laughs> like, how do I had to like think on the fly because I was not expecting that, but I had to think on the fly, like, how do I tell these people what you just said to me is not okay? I need more than that. Yeah. So you need to prepare yourself for like y- this not going your way. So, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, what was I saying? Yes. So, in that aspect, mm-hmm. you should also know why. So, in negotiating, what you have to do what is called like give and take okay. so like why should i pay Alyssa 500 dollars more yes and not this other person mm-hmm. why should i give it to Alyssa over this other person who wants less mm-hmm. so now you have to basically value yourself what can you bring to the company what have you already done mm-hmm. what makes you better than the next person like what are your accomplishments what have you already been known for like you gotta know you gotta know your stats just yes. like the nba girl yeah list the- <laughs> List that, list that crap off. Like, yeah. look, I got 50 rebounds in the last game. <laughs> you can count on me for a 25 shot, a 25 points each game. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna make sure we on the scoreboard no matter what. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like you just gotta. That's how you have to be. You have to know your stats. You have to know what you're good at. You have to know your weaknesses. Because mm-hmm. in knowing your weaknesses, you know your true strengths. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's just how I feel. And that's that's a key part too because I think a lot of people go into negotiations and they're like this is this position, this is how much I feel like it should be worth, yada yada and they focus so much on like the outside factors and they never talk about the internal factors. Like you literally need to let the company know what value you bring and what value it is to them if they pay you this extra money. Not only what have you done for them, but what are you going to do for them with like put these extra hours all this kind of stuff like or why they should give you more vacation time well it'll make me more suitable to um or more not suitable what's the word (laughs) more um what's the word more (laughs) reliable i don't know i can't think of the word but like better at your job it'll improve your your work-life balance things like that um this i think i should get or what was the other thing 
Oh, I'd rather take a smaller percentage on bonus versus, um, I'd rather take a higher, yeah, smaller percentage on bonus and higher salary. Just like <laughs> you, you just need every aspect of it. You need to be able to say what value you're going to bring and what you're going to do with that money. Like yes. to your point, um, negotiation is not only salary, yes. salary. Yes. Cause like somebody, I could be a person that it could be completely satisfied with 60 K. It doesn't matter to me. Mm-hmm. Like, but what does matter to me is I need to ensure that I have this X, Y, and Z health benefits. Mm-hmm. I need X, Y, and Z PTO dates. You want to know why I need this? Because I have to take care of my health because that's a priority to yeah. myself right now. Mm-hmm. So like if the money is not what you're focusing on, you need to be prepared to negotiate the other things too. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to basically you need to know what you want yeah you need to know like what does a um, ideal pto look for you like for you what does ideal health care look like for you what does ideal salary look like for you mm-hmm. what does your life what kind of life are you wanting and how can this next job project whatever step get you there yeah yeah because like <laughs> for instance like with one of the companies that i worked at they offered x amount of vacation time and initially it was kind of like it kind of made me nervous because I'm like, ah, that's not enough for me. But they allow you, one, they have all these extra random holidays throughout the year. And then also they allow you to buy vacation time. And it's like, and if you don't use it, you get the money back at the end of the year. Like, I'm like, okay, that works for me. Like, I still have these options. Like, so it was like, okay, this was so important to me. I was ready to negotiate this whole thing about (laughs) um, vacation time. But then it was like, it got settled during the negotiation phase. So, yes. Yes. It so yeah, the other negotiation things. phase is <laughs> anything and everything that mm-hmm. you need to feel like this is the place for you. Yes. Um. So if you need to negotiate that you need to stand in desk, you better negotiate that you need to yep. stand in desk in that yeah. interview. Yeah. <laughs> um. Like this is gonna make me ten percent more productive, mm-hmm. <laughs> and my workflow, my bones get to flowing. Like yeah. you <laughs> need to be here. Like you need to be ready. Like know what your strengths and weaknesses are. Because uh-huh. yet again. If you know your weakness, if I know my weakness is I cannot sit down at the desk all day. I absolutely have to have the standing desk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I need to be able to know that and articulate yeah. and add that to what I'm bringing to the table. Yeah. Most of the time you don't have to negotiate a standing desk. Uh, this is just an example. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so I just think that things like that are things you should be focusing on. So now we're going to get to the nitty gritty. Mm-hmm. We're going to get to negotiating. Okay. So, how do you make your first move, Alyssa, in negotiating? Um, so, I usually let them, at some point, <laughs> somebody, like, usually the HR person or somebody is going to say, this is what the salary range is. Um, they may not say what they plan to offer or, I don't know, they may say what they plan to offer, they may say what the range is, they may ask me what my, my expectations are, but... Uh, at some point it's going to be brought up and when they bring it up, I'm usually, and it's not something that I want, or even if it is something that I want, I always say, is this final or is there room for negotiation? And usually they're like, yeah, or no, or what is it that you were looking for? And that just opens up for the conversation. So that's usually the first thing. If it's a matter of me bringing it up first, um, I usually, I'll usually ask what the salary range is Mm -hmm. or I'll, or I will say, I looked it up. This is what the, um, what is it? This is what the, yeah, is listing for this role. Is this in line with what your company is, um, looking to pay as well? I personally try not to bring up salary first though. I usually don't like to. I actually I've never had I've never had to. <laughs> Somebody always brings it up first. Yeah. Um, but I yeah I don't really like to because I don't want that to be the focal point of my interview. Like I don't want you to think I'm even though that is why I'm here to get paid. But like I don't want them to think like mm, that's all she's focused on. Like not really that into the company yada yada. So I try not to bring it up first. I usually let them bring it up first and then say, "Is there room for negotiation?" Hmm. Period. Yeah. Um, what was I going to talk about next? I really wrote this all down. (laughs) I wanted to get all the details. Anyway, so I wanted to talk about how to respond to a lowball offer because technically at one of my places, um, I got a lowball offer Mm -hmm. and in that I was like, whoa, like it was, I got caught off guard because I was like, whoa, like mm, I've worked for these people, X, Y, Z. I I don't even look like I deserve that. Um, So I got caught off guard. And so what, what I did when I was caught off guard is I was like, wow, I'm so excited that you gave me the offer. 
I'd love to like sit down and think about it, blah, 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 <laughs> um, and kind of see where I want to do, see where my toes at. I'm so excited. I can't wait to do Can I get back to you in X amount of days? Okay. And I just feel like for people who aren't comfortable with negotiating off back, who are, haven't gained that skill yet, I mm-hmm. feel like that gives you a little time to kind of like think about it, to research it, to understand what you're doing just in case you didn't do that yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, for sure. Um, to like understand what you're doing, to think about it. Like if you want to talk to other people about it and kind of, you know, mm-hmm. see how it's feeling, then you get the opportunity. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, then you get that opportunity to, to do that. But also I feel like it gives you kind of the opportunity to be in charge of the negotiation that's true and to be in charge of how the communication of the negotiation goes Mm -hmm. so i know that like everybody is not very uh assertive (laughs) when it comes to like talking about money because people are uncomfortable so in you like giving yourself a timeline and you giving yourself a limit you can also respond in a different way Mm -hmm. so like if you're already on the phone and you already just start the negotiation process you don't allow yourself just in case you're a type of person who needs to think who can't think quick on their feet who Mm -hmm. can't rebuttal like that you allow yourself to have the access of an email yeah (laughs) yeah you could be like wow in this email, I'm so excited um, to work here. I was, I'm really excited to start this position here. All the are my accomplishments that I am excited to bring here. However, <laughs> this is a little, little low for me. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a little low for me. I was expecting X, Y, and Z. Yep. Is there room for negotiating when it comes to terms X, Y, and Z? Mm-hmm. So then you give yourself the opportunity to get to send the message off, to restate everything that was said to you, to write down everything. It's all in writing. You mm-hmm. get to think about it. And so obviously they might not respond to you immediately in email or they might call you, but you still get the chance to just in case you feel a little timid when it comes to negotiating mm-hmm. to say what you want. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. No, and then yeah. in doing that, since you already researched and you already know what you want, you know when they call you or when they email you what you're willing to accept when they re- call you back. However, I will <laughs> s- Oh, when they call you back. Yeah. Okay. Because I will say when you were speaking, it reminded me of this. Um, when even if they do, let's say they brought up salary last conversation, same time they're offering you the job. Do not... Uh, I, you can say that I'm wrong, but I do not think that you should accept that offer right then and there. I oh, do absolutely think, not. Okay. I do oh, yeah. think that you Sorry. should, no, you're good. I think you should say, um, definitely thank you for the offer. Like, yeah, I am very interested, but I would like a day or two just to think it over. And that way, also, if you didn't do your research, you can go do some more research. Even if that number sounds appealing, you could be like, oh, wait, maybe maybe I do need to be getting more. And you can get an extra 10K, 20K, whatever, um, and then counter it then in an email, like all that kind of stuff. But yes, I don't think you should accept an offer right off rip. Even if they mentioned salary to you before, I've never accepted an offer when they said, oh, yes, we'd like to offer you the position. I'm like, okay, thanks. Like, I'm definitely very interested. How long do I have to get back to you? Like, I'd like to think about it or say I am weighing other. Well, I don't know if you want to tell me weighing other offers, but um, yeah, just definitely don't accept it right then. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that for everybody. Just not only when (laughs) when you get a low ball. I should have said that. But yes, you can do that for everything. And Mm -hmm. you should do that for everything because you should never accept the first offer. Yeah. Because like Alyssa said, the first offer is the no offer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's the weak offer. It is a weak offer. And I will also say with being lowballed. Um, so I was lowballed with one of my positions and it was on the phone. So I didn't really have t- time to like think about it because they literally told me the number and said, is this fine? Yes or no. I had to give an, I had to give an answer. So when things like that happen, if you do have a number in your head, I personally did not have a specific number in my head. I actually did not. There wasn't much information on the roll for me to be able to do research. (laughs) So I personally did not have a specific number in my head. However, I compared it to what I was already doing. And I was like, I need to be making at least this, first of all, for my living, just expenses in general. And I just need to be make, I feel like this is at least what this type of role should be making, just gauging it. And they gave me the offer 
and um she's like is this okay and I was like you know I I was hoping that I would at least get to this range um I have this and this skill set um this is not like okay I have this and this skill set and I feel like I can bring this this and this to the company um and I also mentioned that me taking that role, even though I like I knew that it was going to be less than what I was making at that point. So I mentioned like this is a big pay cut for me. And I know even this range is still a pay cut that I'm telling you, but I would at least like to get to this. Um, and she started asking me like the person started asking me like, OK, well, what was your bonus structure like? And then I told her that and she's like, OK, well, this is how ours work. And I'm like, OK, but that's still not comparable like it doesn't make it comparable to what I'm making like she started breaking down a lot of things and then she pointed this out and I'm like okay well that makes sense and she came back met the high point of my range she was like (laughs) you had like she literally went to the person because she said I cannot approve this I have to get approval she went and I and literally said like um yes they agreed your skill set hit and she went to the high part of my range so if you do get like like sandbags you gotta give an answer (laughs) be like okay well this is the range like don't say a specific number just give them a big range like literally a big range and then yeah so that's my take on low balling my thing on low balling period so when you are negotiating with whatever company Mm -hmm. know that they know exactly the range and what they are willing to do so just because you put your number up or you put your PTO or your vacation or your ben- whatever benefits up for negotiation, and just because they say no to your first offer does mm-hmm. not mean they're not going to rebuttal with something else. Yeah. So just so when you are negotiating, I feel like you should negotiate with your high number. <laughs> um, that's just a tip for me because... I was low-key scared at this one point, and I did not mm-hmm. negotiate with my high number. I negotiated with the number I just wanted. <laughs> um, but I feel like you should negotiate with your high number because even though they could say they could say immediate yes to that or they could say an immediate no, but you mm-hmm. don't know. So I yep. feel like you should start off strong so then you can like continue to like get weed out and negotiate down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's a little extra tip. Start off strong. Yes. Even if you don't believe it, it don't matter what you believe. So super important thing <laughs> with starting off strong, and this kind of goes into downfalls. I don't, I don't know if you, a lot of young people don't know this because I didn't even know this at first. You, it is much harder and almost impossible, <laughs> but very hard to renegotiate salary once you are getting a promotion than it is coming into a company. I thought once you get a, a promotion, you get to renegotiate your salary. That's not (laughs) how every company is. And I don't know if a lot of companies are like that, but usually it's like, this is our percentage range increase salary. When someone gets a promotion, you, that's just what you go with. So if you go into this with a low number, just think about, let's say the increase is a 10%. You're always only going to get 10% off of that previous number. So this number is the number you about to have to work off until work. Yeah. Work off of until you leave that company. So you definitely coming in, you want to come in strong. <laughs> like you want to don't do not settle because it's going to be very hard to change the salary that you're getting. Like they'll just go find somebody else who may, who is willing to take less and give you more and more money. So absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is definitely. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. come in strong. Yeah. Come hard. Yeah. Um, even if you don't believe in yourself, it don't matter. Yep. <laughs> um, the worst thing they can do is renegotiate. Yeah. Be like, mm, how about this number? Yeah. So like, that's why you also need to know what's your top number and what's your bottom number. <laughs> Period. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Know it. Um, and then also I want to say this. Um, it doesn't matter what position you're um, getting a job offer for. I don't care if it's in corporate. I don't care if it's you're going to the NBA. I don't care if you're going to work as a janitor. I don't care if you're mm-hmm. working at Target. <laughs> you need to be like, mm, um, eh. yeah. <laughs> Can we get a little extra can i get a little extra queso (laughs) um but no real talk you need to ask for extra i don't care what you're doing um because each salary or each um amount of money or each benefit that you get is going to thank you Mm -hmm. is going to 
reflect on on the next one Mm -hmm. so like say i started at uh, 35k Mm -hmm. and then in my next job since i started at this 35k you also you usually don't have the confidence (laughs) to be trying to negotiate at 70k even though you could be worth 80k Mm -hmm. but because you started off so low and you lowballed yourself you Mm -hmm. now are stuck in kind of this range people who negotiate make it so much farther in salary and make so much more money than the person who doesn't negotiate at all yes so i don't care what it is i don't care if it's target get your practice in Mm -hmm. (laughs) i don't care i don't care i don't care um but yeah so make sure even if you're excited and happy with the offer i don't care and negotiate it anywhere like and like she said, even with like jobs like Target, negotiate your hours so that you can get to that point to be able to get <laughs> benefits. Because y'all, only you only if you are a part time employee, you don't have to get benefits like health insurance. Like so, negotiate like, hey, can I just get to the thirty eight hours so that I can get to get health care and not have to pay for outside? Like negotiate these kinds of things. Like she said, it's not just salary. Doesn't matter what level you're at, what like right. type of company, like. But Fight for what you are worth. Right. Because if you know that you cannot work on Sundays, <laughs> mm-hmm. that needs to be a part of it. Like, look, yeah. I'm being completely honest. This is the thing. I just, I will take this job. But the only thing that I need is Sundays off. I cannot mm-hmm. work on Sundays. Yeah. Sundays are no go for me. I work on any other day of the week, but I cannot work on Sundays. I need yeah. Sundays off. That is a part of your negotiating. Like, you can negotiate so many other things. I think people get so... You can negotiate a company phone. I'm telling you. I yeah. think people get so caught up with um, money and, like, being nervous about that mm-hmm. that they forget that there's other things that you want and can get out of companies. So, yeah. research that, too. Research yeah. what you can get. Research what you... Like, you might not even know what you really want until right. you really understand the true process of what negotiating is, what you can get out of it, and how it can make you and this feature better yep okay so now we're going to talk about downfalls Mm -hmm. and one of the downfalls i wrote was not negotiating at all in which we kind of already touched on yeah and we already touched on accepting the first offer and so another one i wanted to touch on was getting too emotional um and that's because like it is like going to work or whatever can be people's livelihood Mm -hmm. and so it can be really (laughs) hard to kind of separate this is just a negotiation versus this is my life and i'm sad and i i i'm so poor that i can't afford to do and that's just like no we're taking the motion out of it and Mm -hmm. we need to have this straight face and we need to go in and play our poker game yeah (laughs) that's true that's true um and so yeah i just want to say that i don't feel like you should get too emotional don't get upset if they don't um do the your high end your highest number Mm -hmm. (laughs) because maybe that's just not what the range is maybe that's not the company for you yeah maybe that's not like maybe they can't accompany accompany the things that you want to do or whatever but like you also have to think about while negotiating is this a company is this something that's going to look good for me too Mm -hmm. because if i was going to go work for beyonce and beyonce wasn't paying me nothing does that look good still that i work for beyonce is that worth more Mm -hmm. than what i feel like my high number should be yeah for sure for sure i mean that's honestly like y'all don't know what role i'm in now but like that's why i took the job that i took like I was ready to get into this new industry. And like I told y'all, like I was take, I negotiated my salary <laughs> because I was taking a pay cut regardless of what I was about to do. If I, um, negotiated or not, like I was going to be taking a pay cut, but like for where I wanted to go with my life, this role will look better than if I took this other path. So 100%. Um, another thing with downfalls and kind of with getting emotional, um, I think you, people really need to be, Sometimes people aren't realistic with what um with what they're worth. Like you think you're worth so much more than what you are and it's like it's like don't yes, don't sell yourself short, but also like when you're negotiating, don't sit here and point out all these facts that first of all the company it doesn't matter to the company. Like you telling me that you are great at engineering, but you are interviewing for a 
I don't a know. Painting job. Yeah, like what that that's not relevant. Like okay, <laughs> like th- that's not. So make sure when you are talking about your worth that it one pertains to the company and two you're not you're you're being realistic. Like does this skill set really warrant an extra twenty thousand dollars? It may not. It really may not. Like <laughs> even though it may be valuable to the company, it does not mean that I should be paying you more than I should Sally down down the way who's also <laughs> interviewing for this like um and y'all by the way we just be making up random names um but yeah so definitely i think sometimes people's downfall is that they think they're worth too much or worth more than that position but that also like we said move on to the next position then. <laughs> yeah so, so uh, knowing your worth is very important mm-hmm. so to recap Yes. As we end this segment, (laughs) to recap, you should research, you should prepare, you should understand the negotiation and understand the common pitfalls Mm -hmm. and your worth. Yes. (laughs) Um, These things are all important parts of negotiating. We just gave y'all kind of like a 30 minute to 40 minute spill on it, crash course on it. But Mm -hmm. I definitely think you should do a deeper dive into figuring it out, understanding what it is, because negotiation in itself is a skill set. (laughs) Yep. <laughs> people who do sales negotiate every day negotiation is a skill set that you can take with you everywhere when you mm-hmm. go to the car dealership and you go get a car off the lot you're negotiating <laughs> um when you're trying to buy some shoes from this dude over this other guy you're negotiating so negotiating is a skill that i feel like you should know outside of even just trying to get a better bonus or something mm-hmm. at a job yeah so yes yes please 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 go and do your research and negotiating mm-hmm. because it will take you far in life in all aspects even marriage is a negotiation but y'all don't want to talk about it <laughs> no, um, let's not get into that today <laughs> but so my heart's truth is i said put the advice into practice and negotiate for sal- for the salaries you deserve Period. the life you deserve um my hard truth is know your worth and be realistic period and i had another one i told just lost my train of thought Oh, I guess I think I was just going to say, don't be scared because it's expected. Yes. Don't be yeah. scared. Yeah. Pull up, pull up your pants and get it mm-hmm. together. Yeah. It's, it's 100% on. expected. I've never <laughs> talked to anybody who is higher up in corporate or really anything, any job, any HR person. Like, I've never heard them say like, oh my God, this person negotiated. Like, it's literally something that they expect. And you know what? I think that the nervousness of negotiation comes from not knowing it and not mm-hmm. having practice practice the skill set so back to what i said before yep this is a crash course <laughs> go start negotiating in everyday things in your yeah. life honestly yeah. go get what you want just so yeah start putting it, the practice put in it, place. yes put yeah. it into work yeah <laughs> okay cool. we're out of here though yeah thanks guys for joining us on this very special tuesday um if you'd like to check us out on youtube you can do so at she likes it hard podcast um please like comment and subscribe and if you listen to us on apple Podcasts or spotify please leave a rating and or review if you would like to follow us on any of our socials you can do so at she likes it underscore hard and if you would like to write us or write a hard ask you can do so at any of the socials or you can email us at she likes it hard podcast at gmail.com we love you guys thank you have a great rest of your week and bye